Welcome to Purpose. I'm your host, Corey Clark. I'm just a normal girl who decided to go for it. I created a thriving business from the ground up without sacrificing my sanity, and I believe that you can do the same. You were created on purpose, for a purpose, and I fully believe you can turn that purpose into profit. Each week, I'm going to bring you practical advice to help you live your life and grow your business on purpose. Hey friend, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Purpose. I'm your host, Corey Clark, and I am so thankful to have you here today. Before I jump into today's interview, I wanted to read one of the reviews for the podcast. So I've been trying to share these every week, and I just love seeing who's listening and what they have to say. So the review I'm sharing today is from Life for Boys. And she says, it's easy to listen to and full of great practical advice. Keeping the podcast shorter makes this even easier to listen to. I've listened to all episodes so far and still episode two is my favorite. Thank you for stepping out and giving us a podcast full of purpose. Thank you so much, Life for Boys. I really appreciate it. If you guys have not listened to episode two yet, I share about creating margin in your life so that you can live more purposefully. And it truly is something that I believe in. It's something that I still do to this day. And it is how I was able to write a book and create a product and serve my community. So, and if you have not yet, subscribe to the show and go ahead and leave me a review. I would love to see what you have to say and what you think of the show. So, For today's episode, I had the honor of interviewing Brock Johnson. Brock is a football player for UC Davis and an entrepreneur. He helps brands grow with storytelling. You guys are in for such a treat because Brock really drops some huge truth bombs in our time together. He shares what it was like being raised by entrepreneurs and how he had to buckle down during school to launch his first digital product. But more importantly, you guys, he shares how every single one of us have a story to tell, and he gives us some great tips on how to pull those stories out of our lives so that we can share them with the world. All right, you guys, I'm so excited to introduce you to Brock Johnson. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm really fired up to be here. Yes, I'm so excited. So I saw Brock a couple weeks ago at his mom's event, and he spoke about starting his business. He spoke about Instagram and storytelling, and he just was a great presenter. And so I was like, okay, yes, I need to share him with my audience. (laughs) Yeah, well, thanks so much. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. And uh, that's such a fun event, the Marketing Impact Academy and speaking there. It's, it's really fun. And my favorite part about it is just like the stories. Really, anytime I go to any event is just the stories of everyone telling me stories and me being able to share my stories. I think it's really fun, really exciting. Yeah, for sure. So um, actually, I got a question from someone and it kind of fits with where we're started because it was at your mom's event. And so I asked on Instagram if anybody had any questions for you and Mm -hmm. Serena said, what were the best and worst things about being raised by entrepreneurs and Mm. did this have a big impact on you becoming one yourself? Yeah. So I'll start with the second question. It had a huge impact, like absolutely huge. Um, And I think the biggest impact wasn't necessarily in the lessons that they taught me um, or the brainwashing that they did growing up. I think it was, um, I think the biggest impact was just monkey see monkey do. When I was growing up, I was able to see my parents, um, and juxtapose my parents against, you know, my friend's parents, um, and see how my parents could drop me off at school every day. One parent could take me to school. One was always picking me up. Um, I I was seeing how they were at every practice, every game. They never missed a game. And even now, as I played on the East coast for a couple of years, uh, my dad still would fly across the country every single week to watch me play. Um, so seeing that and then being able to take family vacations and really just the freedom, I think that was the biggest thing that draw me to, or drew me to 
entrepreneurship uh, was the freedom that they experienced and, and the ability to set their own schedule and yes, work really hard, uh, but be able to enjoy their successes and their failures equally uh, because it was totally their own doing and, and they were in total control. So that really attracted me. That's amazing. That's amazing. So that's kind of how I feel like my kids are kind of following suit. My daughter is starting her own business and she wants to have an online clothing boutique. And it's just, it's really fun to see that, that they're inspired by it and, and then being able to let them choose their own path. So do you feel like, um, your parents, I know they had a positive influence. Do you feel like, um, your parents have tried to like steer you in any direction as far as entrepreneurship or are you like, this is my game. I'm doing it my way. They've definitely helped me a ton and I'm so thankful for that. Um, They've taught me a lot of lessons about business and of course about life, uh, just being my parents, but I don't think they necessarily steered me towards entrepreneurship. I have a younger sister and she's starting to become a little bit more entrepreneurial right now. Uh, But really we were raised in an environment that was, you can do whatever you want. Uh, We will support you in whatever you do. So really business owning isn't my first love. I'm a college football player. And football is my first love and still is my, my main passion, my main love. So they really allowed us to experiment and do whatever we wanted, to, uh, wanted while growing up. And I think I naturally gravitated towards entrepreneurship. And then um, it was maybe a little bit easier, I would say, for me to become an entrepreneur. Uh, I definitely had a leg up compared to a lot of other people just because of my parents. And they were such a, a crutch to lean on and, and such a helping hand. Uh, yeah. But I don't think they necessarily... Uh, nudged me that much towards uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that. And I'm a huge fan of letting kids create their own life and follow their dreams. So I think that's amazing. So um, you shared at the event about your first product and your first launch. And I was Mm -hmm. really inspired by that because here you are, you're in college playing football. Like that's a busy full full (laughs) life. And um, yet you still were able to like buckle down and create and launch your business. So what was that like for you? Yeah. So for me, I think what that really was, was my time and how I spent it had to shift to match my priorities. My priorities became instead of hanging out with friends, playing video games, uh, you know, going out, whatever we were going to do as, as college students, it became really, I had two things that mattered to me at that time. And that was football and business. Luckily I was away from, uh, I was away from my family. So I didn't have to worry about friends or family really that much at that point. But my main focus in life, my main priorities became football and business. And I knew that I only had a very limited period of time over summer to, really get my business going fully up and operational uh, before football season started. And I knew I would have zero time. Uh, so I, I rearranged my priorities and my time. I buckled down. And I think what I'm most proud of is that I just got started. It's something that I like to preach a lot is, you know, just start. I think that if you start sloppy, you start messy, you're light years ahead of someone who never started at all, who spent their whole life trying to start perfectly. Because when we try to start perfectly, we'll never start. Uh, So I was really proud that I was able to to release my course, even though it wasn't perfect, even though a lot of the videos were awkward and I was not the best on camera yet, lots of stuttering and uh, not the best set, definitely not the best set or camera or technology or anything like that. But I got started. And from that start, um, I grew my business. I I had a pretty successful launch um, of that, that business. And then from there, I learned a lot about about audience feedback. Um, And I learned that my audience wasn't too fired up about my initial product, which was teaching parents how to keep their kids safe on Snapchat. They thought it was cool, but it wasn't ever going to expand that much. They really were asking for how do we as entrepreneurs use Snapchat to market and grow our brands? Mm -hmm. So I listened to my audience, I shifted um, and eventually launched, uh, relaunched, I guess, uh, what was called unwrap snap at the time. And that was uh, to teach, you know, entrepreneurs and, and small business owners how to market on Snapchat. And then more audience feedback led me to Instagram and Instagram stories, storytelling, marketing, and uh, Instagram stories, marketing, which is kind of my focus today. Yeah. 
I love that. And I am such a huge fan of the same exact thing is, and just doing it messy and getting it out there. Because if you waste so many like months or years trying to get the perfect product, it's still not going to be perfect. And you're going to get all that feedback week one. And you're going to be like, what the heck did I just waste all my time? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that is great. And I love that it started with Snapchat. And now you're even like doing like the whole TikTok thing. Oh, yeah. Which that is amazing and hilarious. Like your <laughs> viral video is, I love it. Um, <laughs> so I do have a question about TikTok. Yeah. Because I am, well, like in my 40s. And <laughs> I don't know if that is a place where I need to be. I, I, I don't feel like I need to be. But if there is someone who's listening that wants to test it out, who do you think is ideal to be using it? And what would they use it for? Yeah, so this is a great question. And uh, something that I've been really researching a lot over the last two weeks. Uh, so for any listener who doesn't know, I don't blame you. Uh, but basically, I just had uh, a video that I posted on TikTok, which used to be known as Musical.ly. So if you've ever heard of Musical.ly, it's now TikTok. Um, and basically what it is, is a app, a social media app, where you can post 15 second videos, usually with some kind of music in the background, whether it's dancing uh, or lip syncing to the music. But uh, recently there's been a lot of other people who are doing other things on TikTok, which I can talk about in a second. Uh, but I posted a video with me and, and my best friend doing our little handshake, and it went viral. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's now over 1.5 million views, and wow. my teammates were like, oh, my gosh, and, and we did it in our football gear. So my teammates were like, oh, my gosh, like that's crazy. And so the next day I was like, all right, let's do a big one with a bunch of my teammates. Um, and so we did a simple little just little hip-swinging dance um, in our locker room, and that now has over – uh, over 4 million, I think closing in on 5 million views oh my on my TikTok. God. Yeah. And at the time I posted it, I only had 300 followers. Wow. So I had 300 followers. It's now close to 5 million views and I have close to a hundred thousand followers. Um, but that went viral since then all my, all my subsequent videos have gone semi viral, um, anywhere from 50,000 to close to a million views on every video. Um, and I'm just really having fun with it. I, I always like to say that like my business and everything I do, I don't do it unless I'm having fun. So that's why I got on TikTok. And Mm -hmm. since then, I've learned to monetize TikTok. I've learned how I can uh, make money off TikTok and and things like that. But for someone who's thinking about it, I don't think anyone needs to be on TikTok. In fact, I don't think anyone needs to be anywhere. I -hmm. think that certain platforms will allow you to grow more easily. Certain platforms may fit your personality or your skill set. Uh, better or worse. So I think the beauty of TikTok, the one thing that I think is really cool about TikTok is that it's pretty easy actually to go viral right now Mm -hmm. because it's still really in the early stages of TikTok. It's relatively simple, relatively easy uh, to go viral and to get hundreds of thousands of views and get hundreds of thousands of followers. And then from there, you can actually very easily transition uh, or leverage those followers from your TikTok to your Instagram, your YouTube, or any of your other channels. Um, but I should note uh, that it's not just dancing and funny videos and, and lip syncing, even though that is kind of what its original intent was. A lot of people have been great, gaining great popularity on the app for doing everything but that. Okay. So I've seen people who are, I've seen this, there's a really popular account right now uh, that is literally giving stock investing advice. It's just a guy, he's, he's a stock advisor and he's giving stock investing advice, which like, why would, you know, that doesn't fit at all with the narrative of, oh, it's just a preteens and teenagers app, but he's had a lot of success. Um, some of my followers uh, have messaged me about how they have found success and are now getting 10, 20, 30,000 views on each of their videos and their workout videos or their exercise tips or their, uh, you know, meal prepping routines and things like that. Uh, so I created a mini course for TikTok and it's called teach TikTok and it's on teach TikTok.com and TikTok is T I C T or T I K T O K is with the K. Okay. Um, T I K T O K. Yeah. Teach TikTok. And so basically from that, a lot of my students uh, have been like, you know, Brock, like I know you got popular from dancing, but like I've actually become really popular from 
uh, sharing workout tips or sharing, you know, relationship advice. And I think it's even more, uh, it's even easier, I should say, uh, to get viral doing those things because less people are doing those things mm -hmm. on TikTok. So does everyone need to be there? No, absolutely not. But um, if you have the free time or you want to check it out and look into it, uh, yeah. I think it could be definitely at the bare minimum, a place to have some fun. For sure. For sure. And I love that. Oh, and I will definitely um, link to your program in the show notes. And I think I need it because I, I mean, I'm always like the person person that will definitely try something at least for a little bit and see if anything sticks. And, but I love what you said that not everybody has to be everywhere. And that's so yeah. true. And we just saw that like as of while we're recording this yesterday was like the big Facebook, Instagram oh shut down and oh people were losing their minds. And, um, you know, it's just the truth. Like you definitely want to be at least least in a couple places so that when something like that happens, you can still communicate with your audience, but you don't have to be everywhere, especially yeah. if you're not enjoying it, because yeah. if you're not enjoying it, you're likely not going to show up. And then that's the worst thing you can do. I, I, I absolutely agree. I think that when we try to show up everywhere, we show up nowhere effectively. That was really something that I learned um, during the last football season where I took a complete break from social media. Uh, which was kind of shocking to a lot of my audience as a social media marketing coach to now say, Hey, I'm leaving for four or five months. Um, and yeah, I lost business and yeah, I um, probably could have made a lot more money or grew some followers or, you know, grew some of my pages during that time. Uh, but I thought the intentionality and the purposefulness behind what I was doing uh, was much more important. And I think that applying that same principle to social media use is huge. So, since I've came back, tried to be omnipresent. I haven't tried to, you know, post things on my business account and my personal account and my other account and on my Twitter and my Facebook pages and, and keep all these balls juggling at once. Instead, I've really tried to focus on just two platforms, Instagram and YouTube. Um, and now TikTok is really just a fun, mm -hmm. uh, fun kind of outlet, but really Instagram and YouTube have been my two primary focuses. And I'm really focused on producing quality consistent content on those platforms rather than just you know trying to produce consistent uh, quantities of content across all platforms yeah that's amazing and i love um i've really enjoyed following you on instagram and your stories you do it really well and um i just feel like you're really relevant and there are a lot of younger entrepreneurs and you know, some of them maybe don't want to learn from someone who's in their forties. So well, thank, thank, like, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the truth because it's funny because I do help my kids and my daughter who's starting her business and, but she's definitely like, Oh, well, Brock said to do this and Brock said <laughs> to do that. And I'm like, okay, like I have now been aged <laughs> <laughs> passing the baton to younger entrepreneurs. That's so funny. But, um, but I do love your presence on Instagram and I do think that, um, you are a great storyteller. So do you have any tips on becoming a good storyteller? on Instagram, because I feel like that is a question a lot of people have. They feel like they don't really have a good story mm -hmm. to tell. Mm, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for that compliment, first of all. Uh, but to answer your question, I think I have a few things to say about this. First of all, specifically on Instagram, one thing that we should be focusing on with our storytelling and on Instagram stories is documentation over creation. I'll say that again, documentation over creation. So, so much of Instagram and so much of the narrative that goes along with Instagram is that everything is curated and everything is perfection. Everything is Photoshopped, filtered, edited, cropped, selfies. Everything's got to be perfect and look neat and pretty. That's kind of the narrative and, and the bad rap that I think Instagram gets. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. There's a lot of pressure uh, to be perfect and to live up to this social media um, persona that we all have online. Mm -hmm. But I think that on Instagram stories, it's so much more important to focus on documentation over creation. So what I mean by that is to focus on documenting or quite literally taking us through what it's like to live your life. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And what it's like to live any of our lives is not all going to be perfect. And in fact, it's almost never going to be perfect. It's going to be lots of mess ups, lots of mistakes. It's going to be a cracked tooth that I have now been missing for the last <laughs> month and a half. It's going to be silly dance videos. It's going to be elation and really, really happy at times. And other times it's probably going to be a little bit bummed out or, or disappointed because you forgot to hit record on a podcast. But when you share those real emotions with your audience, and that's my second tip is to focus on emotions. I call it focusing on feelings rather than feelings. So emotions rather than necessarily statistics or details. Mm -hmm. Um, Your audience will respond much better. They'll begin to know, like, and trust you that much more quickly. Um, And then my final tip, uh, quick tip for becoming a better storyteller on Instagram is to record your stories. And what I mean by that is quite literally write them down. Mm -hmm. So in my notes app on my iPhone, which every phone has a notes app, Mm -hmm. just whip it open and start writing down anytime an interesting, funny, exciting story happens in your life. And this will train you to do a, a few things. First of all, it will begin to allow you to recognize when stories are taking place. So you'll become more keen to it over time. Uh, so, you know, maybe the first day, the first couple days, you only write down a story or two, but by month two or three of writing down your stories, you'll be like, oh my gosh, it's 11 AM. And there's three great stories I could already tell from today. So -hmm. you'll begin to recognize them much easier. Second thing is you will quite literally have a Rolodex, a full list of stories that you can recall. So if you ever need to do an onstage story, an Instagram live, a YouTube video, a Facebook live, a podcast, if you ever have to tell a story you have a list of hundreds of great stories that you can pull up at a moment's notice. And third, you become much more uh, natural and organic in remembering those stories. So you won't have to always check the list. You won't always have to uh, scroll through and read some of your notes. Like, well, what was a good story that had a cliffhanger in it? Uh, What was a good story that had a really exciting ending or a plot twist in it? You'll become much more natural um, and much quicker at remembering those stories. And then one more, one more final thing. Uh, And this is, this is kind of how you ended your question. This is how, uh, this is a question that I get all the time. And it's probably the most common response that I get um, in, in, in response to my storytelling teaching. And that is Brock, I just don't have that exciting of a life. I don't have that big of a story to tell. Like I don't, you know, my, my life's just pretty boring. I'm a stay at home mom. I I do the same things every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I have an analogy to go with this. And it's uh, out in my living room, there's a clock on the wall. There's a clock on the wall. And when I'm out in the living room, I usually don't hear it. In fact, I almost never hear it, whether I'm cooking, eating, watching TV, watching Netflix, watching a movie, whatever I'm doing out there, hanging out with friends. I never really hear that clock on the wall, but it's there and it's making an audible tick. There's a all day long. It's ticking. It's absolutely out there ticking. As long as that battery hasn't died, it's out there ticking. But it's falling on deaf ears because my brain says, well, Brock, like that clock's always going to be there. So we don't have to recognize it. It's kind of like our own breath, Mm -hmm. our own breath. We're usually not aware that we're breathing, but it's happening. And I think there's a parallel there between our breath or that ticking clock and our own greatness, our own stories. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when we take a moment to actually listen to that metaphorical clock on the wall and hear our own stories, hear our own greatness, and recognize how many important events are happening to us on a daily basis, we'll become that much more empowered and that much more uh, equipped to sharing them on social media. And just as we need that clock out on the wall to know the time of the day, and just as I need this breath in my lungs to be able to breathe and live, the world needs to hear your stories, and the world needs to hear your expertise. You were blessed with the stories and the expertise, the greatness that you have, and the world needs to hear them. You deserve uh, to share your expertise stories with the world. Wow. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That was amazing. Thank you. That was so good. (laughs) Mic drop, end of show. (laughs) I was like, oh, snap. He's taking us to church today. (laughs) And that is so true, but wow, I never even thought of it that way because I, I mean, honest, I'm just going to be honest with you. I feel that way sometimes because, you know, I'm home raising my kids, running the business. And to me, that's not boring at all, mm-hmm. but it's that like, well, 
other people are probably going to be bored with it. Like there's nothing exciting about that, but I absolutely love your whole idea of like writing that stuff down in your notes, because I do know that the more you do something, the easier it gets. And I've honestly been like fearful of speaking on stages and stuff because I'm just like, I don't have a really good story to tell. So I'm very challenged by what you've said. And I'm for sure going to start doing that so that I have some stories in my back pocket, like ready to go. Um, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I, I seriously love that. I absolutely love that because I do believe everybody has a story to tell. I do believe everybody has a purpose. And when you're hiding out and not sharing that, um, you know, you're doing yourself and the world a disservice. So Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thank you. I really don't even know what else to talk about. <laughs> well, like... Thank you for allowing me to share that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. So before we wrap up, I have two questions that I ask all of my guests. Mm -hmm. And so the first one is what would be one piece of advice for someone who's just starting out as an entrepreneur? Mm, mm. I think uh, this is one that I have recently taken on and one that I wish I could tell myself even six months ago. Um, and that is to position yourself as an investigator rather than an influencer. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone who is a researcher rather than uh, the person with all the answers. I think that our job as entrepreneurs is to constantly uh, search out answers, constantly be asking questions, be inquisitive, uh, be curious and be trying to learn about our field, our niche, our product, our expertise, and trying to improve. Um, so when we are constantly in this mindset of, yes, I have expertise. Yes, I have things I can share. And yes, I'm going to share those things. But I'm not the end all be all. I'm not the person with all the answers. I may be an expert in this region, but more importantly, I'm an investigator in this region. Uh, so I think that's the biggest tip. Wow. If I could go back in time, what I would tell myself is to focus on asking more questions and trying to figure out more of this whole life thing. Wow. That is really, really good advice. That is great. Okay. Last question is what does living on purpose mean to you? Living on purpose. I love that. Um, what that means to me, I think what that means to me uh, is kind of really honestly been the focus of my life for the last eight months. Um, and that's being intentional with everything I do. So thinking about what I'm going to do before I do it and thinking if does this align with my goals? Uh, does this align with my beliefs? Does this align with where I want my life to be five years from now? And uh, will, will myself tomorrow thank me uh, for my actions of today? I like to um, think about you know, am I truly being present in this moment? I don't want to be focused on tomorrow. I don't want to be focused on yesterday. I want to, as much as I can, uh, be purposeful uh, and find meaning and find joy in, in my present actions. Wow, that was beautiful. That's amazing. That's <laughs> great. And you can tell through your Instagram and your storytelling and just your presence online that you are really living that out and you are fully enjoying life and being intentional about you know, with what you're doing with your life. So thank you for being a thank good you. example to everyone who follows you and meets you. So where can my audience find you? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Corey. That really does mean a lot to me. You're welcome. Uh, that does mean a lot. Um, if anyone wants to follow me or get connected, uh, the best place is my Instagram, which is Brock11Johnson. Uh, the one, one, the 11 is right, right between Brock and Johnson. Um, and if anyone wants to shoot me a DM there, I love uh, building relationships in the direct messages. You're not going to get a bot responding to you. You're not going to get a, a, a personal assistant of, of mine. Uh, it's literally going to be me opening up my Instagram and sending you a direct message and starting that conversation. So if anyone can shoot me a message, I would love that. I love it. I love it. That's great. And, um, and you're on YouTube. Yes, I am. So mm -hmm. I will put all the links to where you can find Brock um, in the show notes. But thank you so much, Brock, for being on the show. I truly am very inspired by you. And I love that, um, like, as entrepreneurs, it does not matter our age or if we are a football player or a stay-at-home mom, we can still find a way to connect and to learn from each other. So I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye. 
Thanks so much for listening, you guys. I hope this episode inspired you as much as it inspired me. Be sure to follow Brock on Instagram and you can find his links to his YouTube, teach TikTok, and everything else you might need to know in the show notes of this episode. So go to coreyclark.com slash 14 to get all of the links to Brock's stuff, to my stuff, anything that you need. And I will see you back here this Friday for another bonus episode. So you guys be sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss any of these bonus episodes. And I would love if you leave me a review. And I also love to connect with my listeners on Instagram. So be sure to screenshot this episode and tag me so that I can see who's listening. Have a great week, friend, and I will see you right here on our next episode of Purpose. Purpose.